they also do you know more and more research and having even more money makes them able to do research even more long term yeah and they perhaps are accelerating at a pace that is beyond the normal type of companies and henrik and i have been speaking about this for a long time uh, we call it the ai divide in some way and, mm-hmm. and we can perhaps even more see it now with large foundational models being increasingly important that a very very few number of entities in the world are able to train them is this something yet makes you scared that it becomes you know you know, normal universities can never train like a large foundational models these days oh you can uh, on brazilus uh, <laughs> it's not it's not the scale of chat or it could never compete with a tech giants kind of si- uh, size uh, yes that yes but i believe that we'll have more data efficient and computer efficient models going forward so we so should, but, but so we should take it, take it on and, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and do but this. Do you think, I mean, today we know it's not the case. Uh, I mean, they have insanely more research than Brasilius has. Mm-hmm. Or even if you take all the European data centers we have combined, mm-hmm. it's nothing e- even close to what uh, OpenAI has or Microsoft has or yeah. uh, Google has. or sh- Exactly, but uh, as a pure researcher, you, uh, I don't think you should be competing with uh, big tech. But my point was that you are seeing like an acceleration of the superscalers, that they are gaining more and more money, mm-hmm. they are getting more and more knowledge, yep. they are getting more and more value, mm-hmm. and this is a dangerous trend. If we that kind of gap keep accelerating, it would be a concentration of power that potentially is a bit scary. Yes, that's why open source should be supported. Yes, yes. good, good. Thank you.